Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about something new. So we've been talking a bit about the trends in vibe hacking, AI-generated malware. It's sort of there, but this is the first time that a truly an AI-powered ransomware was created. That on the fly, using AI makes decisions in terms of how it will ransom, and it can also, it seems to try and pivot. So this was discovered by ESET. It's written in Go, which seems to be the trend. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, we've been doing a lot of Go reverse engineering. It uses the 20B version of GPT OSS, which is OpenAI's open source model, locally by the Olama API. Now, that sentence confused me a bit when I first looked into this. As far as I can tell, it's actually using, or at least it, maybe it has configuration, a, it's shelling it's connecting to a server, and then that server is running the Olama. It's not running on the victim computer, at least not always. So it leverages Lua scripts generated by GPT OSS from hard coded prompts to enumerate the files, inspect target files. Now, the main goal of this is going to be to try and throw off signature scans, obfuscate. Before we get further into this video, we're just going to take a quick break uh, for our sponsor who can. Help with that. I've been tracking so-called vibe hacking for a while, and custom targeted threats look to be a significant factor in the future, making signature-based detection even less reliable. That is why this video is sponsored by ThreatLocker, the zero-trust system that denies by default. Instead of chasing every possible threat, ThreatLocker flips the model. You choose what's allowed, and it blocks everything else without explicit permission. How it works? Just three steps. Step 1. Install ThreatLocker. It starts in learning mode, observing everything you use. 2. You let it learn. It maps the apps, scripts, and services your company uses. 3. Lock it down. Switch to protected mode. And anything unrecognized is denied by default. ThreatLocker maintains an active list of approved applications, so the updates you trust keep rolling in, and its patch management tells you when unpatched software can put your business at risk. And it doesn't stop at allow or deny. With application-level ring fencing, you can lock applications to specific folders and resources, remove internet access from tools that don't actually need it, and control exactly how approved software is allowed to behave. Ready to move from reactive to proactive security? Strengthen your organization's security posture today at threatlocker.com slash Eric Parker. Now back to the video. So the difference is, instead of having embedded functionality to do this, by having these dynamically generated Lua, they're hoping that they won't have a perfectly identical indicators of compromise. It also generates a custom ransom note. Not that I think that really matters. Companies don't pay ransom because the note is well written. Companies pay ransom because they didn't have a backup for business critical file. And unfortunately, sometimes ransomware can really, really cripple a business if they didn't have good security, didn't have backups. Yeah, and here we go. Now here's ESET's press release. And they say uh, it runs a locally accessible model. And yes, it is accessed via an API. Uh, and based on predefined prompts, so that's still there. And the potential issue with this is two runs will probably have variants. But in general, if you sample an LLM output a thousand times, things look pretty similar, especially when you don't have anything complicated, right? If you ask for really complicated code, it might just give you the wrong answer. But if you're asking for something simple, like enumerate the files, most of the time you're going to get the same output. But as they say, this is proof of concept, and it's something that they expect, and I expect definitely to become more prevalent through a variety of ways. Now, they discovered this because it was uploaded on VirusTotal. VirusTotal allows certain companies to pull and download samples, and they have some pretty cool, although obscenely expensive, threat intelligence that can be used to for antivirus companies to do research. And that's also why dodgy virus testing sites like the one we talked about a few months ago exist, is so that threat actors can test their malware without handing it to all of the top security vendors in the world. Now, this isn't the only uh, sign of potential malware going on. Anthropic has published a threat intelligence report. Anthropic is one of the major AI labs. They make Claude and Claude Code, which is a coding agent, which in my experience is extremely, compared to the others, extremely refusal heavy. But I guess some people got through. 
So they're discussing how Claude code has been misused. An extortion operation, a fraudulent employment scheme from North Korea, and the sale of AI-generated ransomware by a criminal with a very basic coding skills. Now that's interesting. Now I wonder how effective that would be. I can't imagine why you would buy AI-generated ransomware. Uh, I could imagine someone using it, but we'll see. And of course, now a lot of this makes sense. Profiling victims, if you can bulk read and summarize, that's going to be very helpful. Analyzing data, yes. And of course, if you're a North Korean running a job scam, a huge benefit of a system that can write reasonable text you're not, it's not going to be as obvious, right? And North Korean probably doesn't speak good English because they're not allowed to travel. So they're not going to learn English in, they're not going to have the experience of being in an English speaking country. So being able to write something uh, and translate their Korean is going to be a huge help for them. And this was a extortion scheme where they stole data and then they threatened to expose it publicly. And Claude Code was apparently automating recon, harvesting victims' credentials and penetrating networks was making tactical and strategic decisions. So while there's a lot of proof of concept, there's also some real world problems. And Anthropic's really gonna try and stop and try and slow this down. Profit plan. <laughs> I'm just amazed that this didn't get reviewed. This looks pretty blatant to me. Profit plan from organization, uh, financial data, wages, donor base, monetization options. I cannot believe, oh, simulated. Okay, simulated. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, of course, you ban the accounts. Ideally, you, in this case, it may be appropriate to see about at least passing on the information tied to those accounts. Yes, they did that. And this one is interesting, although not really a specific abuse of AI, but simply a downside of anything that raises accessibility, is the North Korean IT workers now don't need as much expertise to do some of the jobs. Because despite all the things, the North Korean IT workers, the big part of their success was that they would do a decent job. They would do the things they were hired to do. And that was a part of how they were, uh, in some cases, I saw a security researcher say that they had reached out to a company that had a North Korean IT worker and they said, and the company said, you know, this is our best employee. Do we really have to fire them? Or yes, you do, because they're going to steal your data. But uh, the, the other advantage, of course, they'll have is that sometimes you'll have one guy who's the front and he's actually got two guys helping him. So he may simply have an unfair advantage. And here we go, just being able to write better. Uh, please fix this code. These are all pretty. What does this mean? We had our first picnic. Now, of course, right, they don't have, well, North Koreans really, they don't, have English knowledge and they also don't have world knowledge because they just they live in a world of propaganda and oppression and they don't know like they, they may have never even experienced a picnic even in Korea and then what does this emoji mean they don't have emojis because they don't have internet I wonder how Anthropic found out this was AI generated because this was January this was no actually it wasn't Claude Code because Claude Code came out later than that so this was just they'd somehow gotten Claude to output this doesn't totally shock me because ransomware on a technical level is very simple. Though I'd be a bit concerned if there was like a boneheaded mistake, like the de uh, the decryptor didn't work. There's also a full white paper. I'm actually just going to link this in the description because it's a bit long to read on camera so that you can check out all of the work they have done. I think the... I think there is definitely going to be a growing issue here. There's proof of concepts. I don't think it's going to be a devastating problem because... It still relies on the same problems that ever enabled ransomware attacks. If you have good security, uh, if you're checking that everything is up to date, avoiding zero days, using an EDR, ideally using deny by default, you're just as safe as you were. It's not what would be scary in this context is if AI was finding super stealthy, un previously unknown bugs and ex writing exploit code for them and exploiting them. This is more lower tier work that is currently being exploited. And companies will try and stop this, but I, I think it's going to be very, it's like you can't really put the genie back in the bottle, especially with open weight models. So I think the key has got to be more important than ever, having good security, not, not putting yourself in a situation to be crippled by brand somewhere. There's layers there, good security, but also backups, making sure that information that would be 
devastating to your business if it got released. That needs to have a very high level of security you need to have, be sure, okay, this code base doesn't have exfiltration, and any legitimate ways of accessing that data should be very rate limited and have very strict logs. So you can see, okay, are a few things being pulled out? Is it possible an employee's been compromised? Shut it down. So that's going to be all from me for now. Let me know what you think in the comments below about this, about the general state of cybersecurity in, well, I guess now it's kind of late 2025, anything else. It's all from me for now. Bye.